Hello, TEDx Bend. I am fired up to be here today and to follow up such an amazing speaker that we just had. I'm CK, and I actually do not describe myself as high energy. The rest of the world does. I actually see it a different way as most things. I actually see it as I'm just regular energy, and most of the world is, well, particularly mellow. Anyhow, folks, I am a loud and proud tech geek. Geek, not nerd. Know why? Cute shoes. Cute shoes. <laughs> oh, I love my nerds. Folks, I am a loud and proud geek in these times of renaissance. We are so fortunate to be breathing this rare air that we are in. And yet, and yet, there's so much fear and loathing around all of these shiny devices and robots and artificial intelligences. So I'm going to set the record straight. Give me about 14 minutes to do so. And I'm going to be talking about Humanity is the Killer App. Why? Because the robots ignite a very human revolution. Now, when we imagine the future, by and largely, are we thinking about the infinite possibilities, the amazing capabilities, and all that's ahead of us? OMG, no. We are thinking doom and gloom. Headlines, hashtags, and this dude, Hollywood movies, Hollywood movies. Guys, we are in a cycle where we're learning the wrong thing, because when it comes down to it, the robot revolution, all these AIs, all these magical technologies are actually serving us. So maybe, just maybe, we're wrong, and we need to start thinking like so. It's easy for us to look backwards, right, and see what technology will replace, but it's devilishly difficult, almost impossible, to imagine forward at what all technology will create. But if you had to think now, 20 years ago, would you have actually believed that the sexiest job title of 2018 is data scientist? <laughs> Could our grandparents actually have told us mobile app developers would be a huge job title? No. Change is in our favor. We just need to ask the right questions because maybe this robot revolution is a rare chance for us to ignite new industries, do things like decrease prosperity gaps, close digital divides, and most importantly, give us the most precious of all resources, time. More time to spend with more of the people, on more of the projects, and on more of the passions that matter the most. I love technology, but the one thing technology cannot create more of is time. So we need to create technologies that will give us back our precious time. So let's start at the beginning. What if, what if, intelligent bots humanized us? You might not have noticed, but our smartphones are not really that smart just yet. Why? Because they're at the center of all our interactions. Think about it. But intelligent bots, if they could learn our needs, understand our preferences, and act on our behalf, now here's a concept, stay with me, we might actually move from a society that's always looking down into a civilization that starts to look at one another again. What a concept. Will we even recognize one another? Folks, it's time for smartphones to get much, much smarter. And then, here's a good what if. What if robots liberated us? First, empowering the elderly to live independently. Right now, we have too much assisted living, but we can move that into living with robotic assistance. How? Smart homes, telehealth systems. Look at our disabled. Our disabled could move about freely. Robotic exoskeletons and smart prosthetics. I look forward to the day, a decade or less, where the very word disabilities just starts dis disappearing from our language altogether. It will just be rendered moot. I actually had hurt my knee recently and needed surgery, and my friends were like, what's wrong? Is it the ACL, torn meniscus? And I go, it's just inferior technology. 
It's just inferior technology. What if robots and AIs, artificial intelligences, actually healed us? Think about healthcare right now. It's not healthcare, it's reactive sick care. We literally go to our doctor. Well, if you're me, you go to WebMD and find the most fatal possible <laughs> problem. And then you go to your doctor and you tell he or she what's wrong, how many days you got left, and what meds you need. <laughs> Folks, no. We need to move to preventative health care. Think about Doctors Without Borders. We can move to doctors dissolving borders permanently. How? Cloud Robotics, the doctor in San Diego, remotely operates on the patient in need through Cloud Robotics in Sri Lanka. And borders are dissolved permanently. What if robots were to protect those who protect us, who so bravely, so selflessly run into fires? Folks, Robots would not rob our firefighters of their livelihoods. They would go in first to protect their very lives. So they are creating a first line of defense for our first responders. Here's a question. What if we already love how technology simplifies and automates nearly every aspect of our lives? Who can answer me this? What the heck did the human civilization do before GPS? <laughs> Were we lost all the time? <laughs> the beloved emoji. The fastest growing communication tool in all of human history. We've even found a way to automate language itself. We've even figured out how to automate mating. I mean dating. I mean mating. Folks, 1.6 billion swipes a day on Tinder. You know who you are. You know who you are. We've even found a way to swipe finding Mr. Right or finding Mr. Right now. Folks, we have found a way to automate and simplify every aspect of our lives, not to even mention all the Amazoning, Ubering, Googling, binge watching, Spotifying, and more. These technologies save us time, they streamline for us. So, too, will the robots and AIs. What if it's not a man versus machine competition? but a man and machine, human, woman and machine, collaboration. What do I mean? We are so worried that those darn robots are going to do all those tasks that we do better, faster, cheaper. But here's the thing. The tasks that robots do are not compared to what we do. Robots move with precision, lift heavy objects, analyze millions of data points in a millisecond. But humans, we rock at questioning, judgment, empathy, curiosity. No matter how connected your car, you still need to tell it where to go. And the beauty is, in an intelligent machine civilization, those hardwired human skills are more of a premium and command higher salaries. Why? Because the robots can't do that. So if it is a competition, take heart, humans. We've already won. In fact, we have too many men and women right now doing too many jobs that robots should do. The same thing, the same way, all day, every day. Emotionless, no empathy. We need to be able to work at the top of our talents. You know, I distill it down like so. Do you really feel threatened when you use your iPhone's calculator app? Are you really feeling less than when you have to ask Alexa a question? Do you feel inferior when you use Excel spreadsheet abilities? No! Your time, your talents are better spent elsewhere. What if automation, robots, AIs were to give us our time back? The average manager, she spends 54%, 54% of her time at work managing and scheduling. That's a huge number. Everyone's like, yeah, I know it, I do it. The small number tells the tale. 
only 10% of time is spent on the very human hardwired tasks and abilities and talents of strategy and innovation. We've all seen the alarming articles, the forecasts that have rocketed us to the core, jobs going the way of the horse and buggy, whether it's 15%, 30%, 50% jobs disappearing. These forecasts, worry not, are very misleading. What they mean is jobs that will be impacted, impacted by automation. And the number that will be, 100%. They're like, did she just say 100%? Because that was not inspiring at all. 100%, why? Just like the internet impacted 100% of jobs. Didn't take them away, but it impacted. Think about it. Whether you are a Salesforce.com user prospecting for leads, whether you are using sensors in the soil as a farmer to check the health of your harvest, or whether you're a bike courier using GPS to better manage your route, your job, your industry has been impacted by the internet. Same story will go with automation. What if automation actually increased jobs in existing industries? You know, we all think that these jobs are going to go away, but actually we're finding taking trucking. Trucking is actually doubling in the need for humans. Why? Can anyone tell me why? There's more cargo. Self-driving trucks can only do the long route, so why would there be a bigger need? Because we all keep buying so darn much stuff online that we are absolutely not only saving industries, we're making industries and existing jobs increase. So what if the robots and the AIs were to ignite entirely new industries? What I said earlier, it's easy to reflect backward at what automation will replace, but devilishly difficult to imagine forward. But yet, like I said, when you think about it, if you ask your grandparents, if you ask yourselves, what would be the major job titles of the current day? Would it really be web designer? Would it really be app developer or data scientist? Folks, these things we can't imagine yet. And that's what's so special about these times. Here's the big one that I'm going to end on. What if robots were to connect us? The most magnificent of mega inventions. I think we can all agree. The World Wide Web. But here's the thing. The World Wide Web ain't. As I stand here, 2018, only 50%, 50% of the entire world is connected. But through robotic technologies, drones, loons, low orbit satellites, we will be able to beam the necessary broadband to the other 50% over the next 2, 5, 10, and 20 years. We will truly start closing the digital divide. It's probably never been said more beautiful than when I had this geeky talk with the CTO of Amazon Robotics, Ty Brady, and he said, CK, when we connect the next billion, what are the chances? What are the chances that we'll find the next Einstein? Guys, if we've done all we've done to date on 50% of the world being connected with these technologies, can we even imagine the times in front of us? And when we do imagine them, please, have heart and think about this. These are all for humanity to win, for us to increase and ignite new industries, to close digital divides, to ignite entirely new jobs and close prosperity gaps, but most important, most important, to have more time for precisely the activities like TEDx. Because more time for more of the projects, the passions, and the people that matter the very most. So maybe it's not OMG, the robots are coming. Maybe, just maybe, it's the robots can't get here fast enough. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.